In this video, Eric Person sets up a trap that not a lot of people talk about because it's more of a long con. Let me know if you can spot it as we go because this trap is subtle, unassuming, and insidious. Okay, so I made a video earlier about Eric Person going on monkey tilt and punting off about half a million. Uh, link in the card up top. But I wanna show another version of Eric and this is why he is such a formidable opponent at the table because he's exceptional at table talk here. So we get into a spot where him and Ludacris have been going back and forth for a couple hands. Eric can tell that Luda is a little bit out of his element. He's, he's taking a shot at the big game and, and Eric is just, you know, he, this guy's got nerves of steel, even though he can go on tilt and, and, and all that stuff. But Eric is not somebody to be trifled with when it comes to like talking. So we're going to see a spot here. Eric's got queen jack of clubs. He's in the cutoff. He's going to open. Keating's going to call it seven deuce because he's Keating. So Ludacris, nine, seven of clubs in the small blind. He's going to three bet the 13 K. Um, this is his MO. This is why we want to see Ludacris at the uh, table. So Eric's going to call. Keating actually gets out of the way and we get the monster flop. So now Luda goes for a check race. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Eric goes, how much do you have? And he's like, let's just, let's just put it all in. Let's just go for it, right? Like, Eric flops a monster. And Luda's just like, what did I just get myself into, right? He flopped a flush draw. And now he's just like, let's do it. Whew. And Luda gets the bad news. Don't play social poker. What does that even mean? I'll tell you. Eric Person, I hope I'm saying that right. Excellent table talk. He, as we saw, was able to get Luda to just feel like, okay, whatever, I'll gamble. He was crushed in that specific spot. I'll give you another example and tell me if you've ever witnessed this or actually participated. Become friendly with a player at the table, maybe he's your neighbor, and you get into a spot where it's marginal. Maybe you've got top pair, good kicker, or maybe you're on a draw, and your neighbor says, you know, I'll just check. And then you, as you see them go, I'll just check, interpret that as they might have something here, but they don't want to bet. And then you think, oh, I'll just be nice. I'll check too, right? Don't do that if you want to win the most money. I mean, if you're there for the social aspect more than the competitive aspect, sure. Then the, the rest of this video is not for you. But if you are trying to win the most money while you're at the table, because we've only got so much time on this planet and you're only going to have so many Thursdays. To me, it's Thursday. I have existential crises on Thursday. So if you only have so many Thursdays and you've decided to play poker on that Thursday and you want to win because winning makes money and making money can make more impact in your life and those lives around you, which is why it's good to make money. You, you want to stay away from these situations where you're going along with the other person. In, in this video example, it's Luda going along with Eric going, all right, let's just put it in. The genius behind Eric in that spot is he knows Luda is out on a limb here, figuratively, in this bigger game. Luda is like really, really good at the 5-5, five, five, 100 game and the 50-100 game and the 25-50 game where he gets to enforce his will against everybody else. And he's the one making other people make these social plays where they just go along with what he's doing. They let him squeeze with garbage. They let him get away with it. Eric is not that kind of guy. So Eric is going to be able to make Luda think like it's a good idea to go along with this all. Oh, let's just get it all in, right? Luda's got a flush draw. What's the worst that can happen? So next time you're at the table and someone's like, oh, let's just check it down or, oh, I'll just check. Recognize that as somebody attempting to play social poker with you. You can still be friends with people off the table and be out for blood on the table. And if they can't recognize that, well, maybe that's just too bad for them. Think about movies and TV shows with lawyers involved. 
They battle in court. They're yelling at each other. Maybe they're hurling insults. And then the next scene, they're at lunch talking about the case. Nice work today. Redirect on Barnes. <laughs> can you do that with poker players? I can. I can think of a few where we'll play, we'll battle, and then we'll go to dinner afterwards. Or we'll go to dinner, uh, you know, the next day, or we'll go to lunch and we'll talk, we'll talk shop, right? It's not personal because if you've noticed, like, the better players in your player pool are a little bit more friendly with each other. And it's not an elitist thing. It's, it's more of a mutual respect where if you've battled with some people in the past or you just know each other are like good players, it's not a bad idea to have them in your network and be able to talk hands, either scout games for each other. You know, I've benefited from something like that where someone's like, hey, this is a good game, seat open. And I've done the same to other, you know, other people that I think are good for the game, even if they are good poker players. So there's ways to be social in poker. And there's ways to avoid being social in poker. I would encourage you to build your poker network to people that you think are good players so you have people to bounce ideas off of. But I would also discourage you from being in that social poker mode when you're on the table, okay? When you're on the table, you're out for blood if you wanna be competitive. I hope this makes sense. And if you like this video, watch this one next to see if you know what Phil Galfon knows.